Recordology. Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. How is your week going? I hope you're having a great time doing whatever you're doing. I hope you're staying safe and entertaining yourself and uh, doing all the things that need to get done and hopefully have a little time over at the end of the day to hang out with me or to do something perhaps more interesting, uh, play some records or whatever. Today I wanted to talk to you about the compact cassette tape. What could I possibly have to say that we haven't said a thousand times before? I got to thinking about this. A lot of these shows, uh, the genesis of these shows begins as a shower thought or a driving in the car and you know have time on my hands to think kind of a thought and, or laying awake in bed at night you know obsessing over you know what did I get right or wrong in that night's show but you know what I mean you know sometimes you get to thinking about something and it's interesting I realized that I was completely wrong about cassette tapes completely wrong specifically when I was a kid because up until, let's just say later in life, let's not embarrass myself more than is necessary, but up until um, later in life, I thought, now keep in mind, I lived with cassette tapes. My Michael Jackson Bad album, I have another copy of that, not the original one, because I wore that out. And then I replaced it and probably wore that out too. Uh, I lived with tapes. You know, I recorded stuff off the radio. I remember just letting the, you know, my little uh, Sanyo boombox that I inherited from my mom, just let it record off the radio. There used to be this radio station called KS1075, and they played kind of hip hop, but they also played Michael Jackson and, you know, pop music was kind of more, they were separate genres, I think more so back in the 90, early 90s and late 80s. But anyway, I remember just recording the radio on the odd chance that I would get one of my favorite songs recorded. <laughs> but anyway, I lived with these things. I lived with compact cassette tapes, as many of you did as well, I'm sure. But having been that intimately aware of how they, uh, well, not how they work, because that's my point here is I got it wrong, uh, but being intimately aware of their existence and, you know, utilizing them every single day, I had no idea how they worked. I thought I did. I thought they simply, you know, you put the tape in. I understand there's four tracks, two on each, you know, two stereo tracks one way, two stereo tracks the other way. Uh, I suppose if I thought hard enough, although I probably didn't care at that time, that I realized it was eighth inch tape, half of quarter inch tape. But I didn't really get it. I knew that the head pushed, you know, into the tape and there was the pressure pad. And I probably could have, you know, realized that the metal behind there was some sort of protection against the magnetic wonder that was going on uh you know repositioning the oxide material on that tape and i had a a basic understanding of you know what uh ferric oxide you know would do i don't think i had any chrome or any metal tapes you know at that stage of my life i still don't really have many um and i you know honestly prefer these because they're cheap and for my purposes they serve it well anyway but i didn't realize you know, what else was going on here? Mostly I didn't understand how the heck this thing was driven. I thought that what was happening is these uh, feed reels, somebody told me supply reel and take up reel. They, I thought that the uh, take up reel was being spun and that it was pulling the tape through and the tape would pass over the head. That seems to make sense. And I always thought it was interesting how there was this big fat rubber wheel thing. I'm using this Sears because it is a really good access to the, in very simple, you know, access to this uh, mechanism. Um, let me turn the light down here. I thought it was, you know, this big rubber wheel would come out, and I figured that it was just sort of, you know, rolling its way along. I didn't think about it. Okay, I didn't think about it. By the way, this is the erase head. That is the record and play head. You can't record, well, you can record onto previously recorded tape, but if you don't erase it first, it just layers the sound. That's another thing I didn't realize. I was like, why do they need an erase head? When you record over it, it's going to blank out the old recording. Well, that doesn't happen. Sometime we had to, you know, put some tape over the erase head and layer some recordings. You can see what I mean. It's kind of an interesting thing. You'll also notice that um, that the because uh, it's upside down, this is going to be the uh, take up reel is rotating. So it is rotating, and I put my finger on there, and I feel you know tension. It is pulling it, 
uh, or it's rotating it in a strong way, but I didn't realize that this guy right here is nothing to do with pulling the tape through. Nothing to do. And not only that, it doesn't even have anything to do with the pinch roller. Well, it has something to do with the pinch roller, but it's not the pinch roller. It's the cap stand. This little metal shaft right here, this tiny little metal shaft is actually what's pulling the tape through. And the pinch roller is a dummy, you know, there's no power being applied to it. All it does is push against the cap stand, which is spinning, and thereby it spins as well. Now let me take this little moment to reiterate my fascination with an 8-track tape. Let me see, where are my 8-tracks? Bear with me. Where the heck are my 8-tracks? Come on, they're not that far away. Okay, so I'm going to take 8-track tape here. Let's just... Okay, so we know what's going on here. The, the soft rubber of the pinch roller is pushing up against the cap stand, which is rotating. And the, the act of, you know, the pressure being pushed up on this creates adhesion, which allows the tape to be gripped and spun and threaded through. We'll talk why that happens in a minute. Let's talk about this for a second though. The fact that it's soft rubber against a metal pole, tape in the middle, pinched, hence pinch roller, makes sense to me. What doesn't make sense to me is an eight track tape where the uh, pinch roller is built in, not that part, but the fact that they can sometimes use these rigid plastic, I mean, that's hard plastic pinch roller and the cap stand will you know, come into contact like this same principle, the cap stand is what's spinning, but the fact that a rigid pinch roller works in that scenario blows my mind. And obviously a lot of eight tracks use a, a soft rubber pinch roller as well. That aside, let's talk about this for a minute. So why don't cassette players, recorders, simply just pull the tape through, harder than you think to do upside down. Why don't they just pull the tape through by what I was thinking was happening, and that's by pulling the tape or spinning the take up reel. I mean, you could physically pull the tape through that way. We just proved that a minute ago. Why not do that? So I want you to notice something. These two reels, the supply reel and the take up reel, are spinning at different directions, or it's different speeds, same direction, different speeds. Sorry, it's been a long day. How can that be? We know the tape is traveling at a constant linear velocity, yet this supply reel is spinning slower than the take-up reel. And if we were to fast forward literally this tape to the end where the you can see the most of the tape is on the supply reel still. If we were to reverse, in fact, let's do that. Let's reverse it. Let's flip the tape. Remember, this was slow. That was fast. Let's flip it over. Same exact thing, hit play again. Now this is fast and that's slow. So if we spin this at the same speed the whole time, or excuse me, this, this is what's being spun. This is passive right now. The speed would change, that's my point. If you were to spin this at the same constant speed, what passes in front of there would not necessarily be the same speed. I'm just thinking out loud. Am I wrong? Tell me if I'm wrong down below. I'm not preaching here. I'm just thinking out loud. So just like a rim drive, you know, you know, tape player, which I have one of the uh, Spectra. It is it an Electra, an Electra. It's a rim drive. Same principle. It literally spins the take up reel or the supply reel in order to pull the tape through. But the problem is, is that the pitch will actually change if you were to play that back on another machine. I think that has a lot to do with the fact that the supply and take up reels spin at different speeds. So what's happening is that cap stand, that little metal pole, is what's driving the tape. And the pinch roller is pushing against it, creating adhesion to allow that to happen. Why is this desirable? Well. This ensures that it's done at a constant linear velocity that doesn't speed up or slow down depending on the position of the tape on the reels. If you were to do it the other way around, I believe that there would be pitch variations just like on the open reel to reel where we've got that rim drive. 
So how does it spin and why is it spinning? So what's happening is the supply reel is spinning. This actually, this sprocket is spinning, but it's tensioned in such a way that based on how much tape is on the supply and, 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 and uh, take up reels, I don't know why it's so hard to say tonight. It will spin as fast as it can depending on the tension that's provided or that's available and the weight of what's on the reel. So that's my understanding. Again, I'm thinking out loud. Tell me if I got it right or wrong. Add to that, detract from it. But that's kind of my thoughts on surprisingly more dynamic of a <laughs> process than I would think it would be. Another thing that occurred to me that's kind of interesting is um, if we look at this here, these openings, why is this? Okay, so we have three openings on the cassette tape. We know the center one lines up with the record and playback head. We know the one on the left aligns with the pinch roller and the one on the right aligns with the erase head. And the beauty of this design is it's symmetrical. So you flip the tape, those three line up for the other side. I know I'm probably saying stuff that you're like, yeah, you didn't know this. Yeah. <laughs> This is my, th I was just thinking through this. It's, it, it's an ingenious idea. It's an ingenious idea. The other thing too, I think that's important to realize in this equation is the fact that simply belt driving this will produce inconsistencies in speed. It's a well-known fact that any motor is gonna have variations in power that get translated as wow and flutter or speed fluctuations, which in turn get translated as pitch variations, warbliness. Um, so if you were to pull the tape through, that would be another side effect of that. You would get that, uh, inconsistency in the speed. So the capstan helps because its diameter is so small compared to the flywheel or the heavy weighted wheel that's under there connected to that motor. The mass inertia of the flywheel is stronger than the variations in the motor fluctuations. So as the motor speed is going up and down, up and down, up and down, it is tensioned to the flywheel with a rubber belt. Some mechanisms use direct drive, but more commonly it's a rubber belt. And those inconsistencies get absorbed in the tension of the rubber belt. They also get absorbed in the mass inertia of that heavy flywheel spinning around. Okay, that's it guys. I just brain dumped everything that I could think of the other day on this. And I'm like, this is really interesting. I wanna put it in front of you guys, see what you think. Again, add to, detract whatever but those are my thoughts about compact cassettes and i clearly had no idea about any of that had it totally wrong as a kid and now knowing that really just adds to my appreciation of the format that much more sorry we spent so much of that show zoomed in there but anyway that's gonna do it for now guys happy record hunting we will see you tomorrow